right? Matthew 18, 21 to 22. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times? Jesus said unto him, I say not until seven times, but until 70 times seven. What does this mean to you, Tasha Lee? Well, forgiveness. Let me start with unforgiveness. Yes. I struggled with unforgiveness, I can safely say, for over two decades. Mm -hmm. This came as a result of I was sexually abused by my godfather from the tender, tender age of eight years old. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't have the courage to tell anyone. A lot of times when we hear stories like these, we'd say, oh, the mother killed his son. I did not have a careless mother. But this was someone who she trusted and someone that was in her home every day. This was a friend of the family. He was like an uncle. As I said earlier, was my godfather. And this happened repeatedly. And over the years, I hated myself. No one knew I hated myself. And um, atrocities, all sorts of calamities happened. And one at a time, I, I started to curse God. I curse God and I say, God, why did you allow this to happen to such a young, innocent child? Just as some of you who are watching me right now, you're going through something similar or been through some sort of abuse and then you're wondering, where is this all-loving, all-seeing God? And I remember this, this, this just allowed me to, to, to become promiscuous growing up and rebellious and I want to say that um, very few persons saw the sign and knew that something else was, was wrong. But for the masses, they passed all sort of judgment. Be careful of the judgment that you pass about somebody and you don't know what they're going through. And I remember at age 17, I was working downtown and when I reach right at the mothers, you know the mothers are there, Orange Street, Canada, they saw across a big tree. My ear of eyes, my work. And it's like it come and it lick my head and something just said, take up your bag. I'ma take up my bag, I'ma start to storm out of work. And something just said, take off your clothes and start to walk. And I started to unbutton. I never forget I was wearing a blue skirt suit and I started to unbutton my clothes. And just as I go walk in front of the, the bus, I don't know where the hand come from and pull me back. When I reach home, I remember this lady, she said to me, because Princess is my pet name, she said, Princess, what happened here today? Because my dear hospital came, my daughter got hospital and got some for left my daughter because her daughter had epilepsy leave the child and go in the bathroom and pray and when she tell me the time sister shanika and the time when that was happening i say yes god it had to be god god send an angel in in the form of human to come and stand in the gap and say no touch because God knew the word of the Lord said before him for me in my mother's womb. He knew me that day here today. And he knew me married somebody, somebody under the, the show. And fast forward 2008, I went to England. I must say, all right, I'm starting the wrong road. Start par with some people. I'm going to have no business a par with them same set of people that set up my life and frame me wrongfully frame me for something that I knew nothing about. And when I went to England, I said, all right, God, like how me used to do them favors. My must can do them favors. Come on, them kill the man. 
I'm going to say, God, you're so in my England, I want you to provide that work for me. Because the first money when I work, I send it to Jamaica because I want your son of man they did. Sister Shan, my dear England, could get no work. <laughs> but could he get no work? I, I probably got a job in the same year when I was supposed to come home. And then I said, all right, God, this is it. I don't want him dead when I'm overseas. I want him dead so when I go to funeral, I can go to the casket and I can look down and I can just spit in that face. That was my plan that I had. Anyway, while I was in England, the 12th of September, 2009, I was admitted to the Dudley Road Hospital. I was having some series of headaches. Admitted to the Dudley Road Hospital. They run every test possible, ECG, all sorts. They couldn't find the source of the headache. And I remember when I don't remember the name of the procedure. We, 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 they inserted a needle to the bottom of my spine and they sent a catheter to my brain. And when they began to pull down some fluid, blood, 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 I had a brain hemorrhage. Oh my God. I could have died so many times. I had a brain hemorrhage and it was God. I remember. I was going to the Pentecostal church in, and all of them went on fasting for me. My mother, my family here in Jamaica, my church family, they went on fasting and that's another time where I proved God. And all of this, you see, unforgiveness, it eats away at you like maggots. It makes you sick and I'm a living testimony to that. It's like you have, when you pass a dead animal on the road, and the maggot start to eat it away until it become nothing. That is what unforgiveness does. And I was being eaten away. I was being eaten alive. And I said, God, I need healing from this. Everybody, I said, touch for your stress board. We have a stress board. Nobody knew in my subconscious because I left my daughter, I had one child at the time, I left my daughter here in Jamaica. And because my mother never knew about what was going on, I spoke to my mother at times and the same individual, I could hear their voice in the background. And then my start say, God, history, go and repeat itself because my daughter is there and I am how many thousand miles away. And then I remember when I, I got healed, long and short, I got healed of the brain hemorrhage. They were contemplating surgery and I got healed, total healing. And I came back to Jamaica 2010. But before I came back, I remember I made a promise to God, God, if you, if you heal me, if you allow me not to go under the knife, just as what the doctors were saying, then I would give my life to you. How many times have we made promises to God? And we did not keep it. But he always remains faithful. And I remember I came back to Jamaica 2010 and I forgot about the promise that I made to God. I came and we started to party and the piercings and the tattoos and bleach out my skin and still there was a void. I struggled because every time I see the man, something bubble up in my heart. I gave my life to God 2016, the 21st of April. And I remember, I said, God, I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I remember I went somewhere with my church and I fell on the floor and I said, God, I want, I want to have an experience. I want to have that. But then God said to me, I cannot pour your wine in a dirty vessel. And then I start to examine myself. I said, God, but I give, I give my life to you. What is it? And then the Holy Spirit reminded me, unforgiveness 
And then I say, God, but it's not my fault. I was not at fault. I was an innocent child. But just like what the Bible says, how many times must I forgive you after you've hurted me 70 times 7? And it was hard. It was very hard. And I remember in July, Minister Heather, she called me because those who were close to me, they knew my story. Because a lot of persons they say, but I know Tasha and I never know she go through all of these things. Somebody said that to me the other day. Tasha, see you always smiling, but let me tell you something. Smile, makeup, and clothes, they hide a lot of hurt and scars. In the spirit, if we could look, a lot of persons have band-aid and they're suppressing the scars. But there comes a point when you have to get total deliverance, when you have to allow God to take off the band-aid and say, God, total healing. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. And that's what I had to do. Mm -hmm. And Minister Hena called me and she said, Tash, will you share at the conference? And instantly, I said, you're mad. Share what? That is not something that I am proud to talk about. That is something that come with shame and disgrace. And I was in my bathroom showering for work. And the Holy Spirit started to minister to me, Tash, you're not free. You are not free. You are not free at all. Every day you get up and you sing because I do worship. I'm a member of the praise and worship team. And oftentimes I sing. My shackles are broken. And I am free. But was I really free? No, I was not. I was shackled by fear. Because every time I saw that man, something on the inside of me would start to bubble and my start sweating. Something. I said, God, no, something. Something is not right about this. That means if, I, if I'm still feeling this way, then I'm still struggling with unforgiveness. But the good thing about it is my husband knows the story. My children knows the story. Those in my close circle, they know my story. So a woman of God I had to get down to get down and we said God I don't want to be a prisoner of this anymore I don't I, I want to be free I want to if I see this man I can look him in the eyes and say God bless you and I feel no hurt or no pain and woman of God when you asked me for the interview when I when I went to Minister Heather's reshuffle conference and I shared the amount of persons that reached out to me so I'm saying, God, you had to get the glory out of all of this. Because unforgiveness, the hurt, the pain, the abuse, it's holding so many persons captive. You see them happy. You see them happy in the streets. They're happy in the dance hall. They're happy all about. But deep down, they're hurting and they're, they're rotting on the inside. It's like we are a walking dead. And when I shared it at the conference, and you called me, I did not tell you no as I did, Minister Hedda. But I was not going to come. Because I am thinking that, I don't want to be repeating, but listen, somebody out there, even somebody that is watching this right now, you're going through the same situation. But let me tell you something. You see, who God set free, and when you really have an encounter, yes. when you really have an encounter with God, there is no way you can be the same. Because you would have been surprised how many persons, yes, you might see me in the streets, yes, and you see me wear a beautiful smile. But behind that smile, I paid dearly to have this smile. And when the woman of God called me, one of my friends that goes to my church, she said to me, Tash, 
somebody is going to call you. Then when she said that to me, a man of God said to me, came into my store and he said to me, woman of God, somebody is going to call you for an interview that will be broadcast here. Yeah. I'm going to look on him and he must say, why you look on me? I must say, because I get the call already. I'm never going to go and say, yes, because God says you procrastinate. But let me tell somebody this morning, you say procrastination, it is a dream killer. And I was one of the biggest procrastinators. But God has changed my story for him to get the glory out of all of this. Because you see, no, I'm free. Not because you see, me, I, am, I, I, am, I am talking about the glory of God and the goodness of God. And I'm getting all emotional. Because I have been through so much. But I am still here. Yes. I am still here and I'm helping somebody. I'm helping somebody. Yes. Glory to God. Just allow the Holy Spirit. You see, all of the bandaid and the bandage where you have a suppress the cut. Because sometimes we get some cuts so deep. Allow the Holy Spirit to take off the bandaid. Take off the bandage. Because we wear some pretty clothes and some big clothes. And if we remove the clothes, we see the cut and the hurt. And the bandaid underneath it. But allow the Holy Spirit to administer total healing. Total deliverance. Glory to the name of Jesus. And this morning, I can tell somebody, somebody, a young girl that is watching, a young man that is watching, and you're saying, God, where are you in all of this? But listen, let me remind you of the story of the three Hebrew boys. God did not deliver them, though he knew they were about to go in the fire. He could have come before they were thrown. But he waited. God is so strategic. He waited until they were in. He came and he delivered. And glory to God. Just like the three Hebrew boys that went through all the hurt, the pain, the molestation and the abuse. I don't look like what I've been through. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 So somebody out there, somebody out there, God still heals and he heals in totality.